Cool. Hey, we had some homework over the weekend, I believe. Ooh. I wasn't looking for the laugh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought so, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, you can laugh at me anytime you want. You know no, that. I wasn't laughing at you. You can still laugh at me. Yeah, I said I'll laugh at you. Hey, Christian. This is a uh, a review packet. So it'll be if you get that if you get it done by the time we have our final next week, it uh, could add to your curve. But Can you explain curve, please? So what? Hey, what you doing? You have a quiz. You have all the capstone things here. I do. Cool. Excuse me, everybody. I'm recording, so don't say anything too bad. All right. So, my friends, so the question was, how does a curve work, right? Is that so? Yeah. You that? So, this is what I was planning on the curve. Now, I'm going to make up a value because we haven't decided what the curve is going to be yet. We'll decide what the curve will be um, after kids take it. But let's say, let's say you get a 78 out of 100 on the final. I'm just saying. I'm just picking arbitrary numbers. So what we might do is, if you do the um, review packet, we will allow a curve to take place. So what that might be is, I might take this score and I might multiply. Let's say the curve is two percent. I might would multiply by 0 0.10 or 1.02, which is 78 times 0.102. I do a calculator. I don't feel like doing more math. 78 times 1.02. So that would allow that 78 to become 79. Use my finger. Uh oh, who broke my phone? Oh, there it is. Calculator. That makes it a 79.56. So, so then you'll round it probably. Yeah. So that's that's basically how a curve would work. Are you only going to curve by 79.5? I don't remember. So how do you know if it's 79.56? Do what? How do you know what percent the curve is gonna be? We base it we base it on all of the algebra one teachers. We kind of say, hey, how did everyone do? And we'll kind of go through it. And there's always one teacher who's like, oh, all my kids got 100. And you're like, ow. <laughs> and then, so what we basically do is we find out what the class average was and then figure out what we want to do as a curve. So like 102% would be a pretty minimal curve. I've seen it as high as like 106%, which brings that 79.56 up. So it's based on what you complete, or what you earn on the test. It's not like the free added points are just multiplied by scale factor. So it helps grades. It doesn't hurt grades. Now, now in that terminology, in college, just so you know, there's something called a bell curve. Ooh. This is good and bad. So my first math class I took at Arizona State was um, linear algebra. And it was doing linear equations, like a whole bunch of them, but in multi-dimensions. It's like ridiculous, weird thinking. You know, you want to go just kick something when you leave class because you're like, Bleh. 
So I get my test back, you know, and there's 80 people in the class. So we get our test back. And I had a 71%. And I'm like, whew, got to see. But because the bell curve, how the bell curve works is this. It's, a, it's called a normal curve. And the average grade falls here. And then you have something called a standard deviation, which is basically standard deviation basically is how far away from the average are you actually. So how you find the average is you take everyone's score and divide by the number of people who took it. My 71% fell right here, which gave me an A. So that tells you that the rest of the people in the class did really poorly. Wait, so everybody else did really bad and everybody else really bad and you scored the most? Yeah. What if everyone else did really good and you got the 70? Yeah, so, if, so mm -hmm. if everyone did really well and I was the dangling in the class, which it should have been that way, I could have fallen back here, so I could have gotten a D or an F. That's so That's, yeah. Well, it's just like you got your score as a 71, but then because of other, other class. And they'll usually tell you in college, this class is based on a bell curve. And so you hear that and you start sizing up the people in the class going, oh, damn. All right, I was, I was in high school with that kid over there, and that kid couldn't even count to three. I might stick around this class. Or you're looking at that kid. That kid, when he's in fourth grade, was taking BC calculus. Maybe I should switch classes. You know, I, I'm saying that sarcastically, but it's, it's just one of those things that you've taken a large population and you create a normal curve. That's actually how AP tests work and IB tests work. So um, <coughs> last, year's, last year's AP test was considered a tougher score or a tougher test. And if you got a 60, I believe it was, out of 110 points, that gave you a five on the test. And that's the highest you can get. That was based on how everyone did. So they normalized it. Um, a few years before, it was an easier test. So if you got a 72 out of 110, you got a five, which is the highest. So yeah. it, it, it's based on, and AP is really good because you have everybody in the United States and some other countries that are doing it. So they take all the scores, figure out what the average score is, and then that's how they award the fives and the fours and the threes and twos and ones. You, basically how a normal curve should work is using letter grades, you should have 68% of all your students earn a C. That's based, that's what you want to do. And then you formulate it out one standard deviation each way. So if you go out one standard deviation this way, so this whole population here should be about 95%. So 95% of your students should get a B, C, or a D. And then a little bit further out, then it's 99.97% because there's like usually somebody who will leave it blank and get a zero. So 99.97% should fall between the ABCD F range. So that's how it works. But that's a normal curve. Okay? But don't worry, you're not on the normal curve. So I would say this if, if we did do a normal curve amongst Algebra 1 classes, you guys would all benefit in this class because you're doing pretty well. There are algebra one classes that have like 20 kids in it and like 18 of them are failing. So it's just sometimes it's just how like you know the dice are rolled in class yeah. maybe. So and then sometimes I mean I had one of my algebra ones last year had like a 12% average higher than everybody else. It was just because of the period of those students it was a the harder work and kids or whatever but it doesn't mean there's something functionally wrong with everyone else it's just just didn't get it yeah. so i don't know statistics is a great thing but boy i tell you some people really get kooky with it all right hey what page was our homework on it was those word problems wasn't it like just one one front page all right let's just walk through them can we walk through those it was page 165 i believe Right? And we were using this equation. Uh, we're using that. We were using y equals um, an amount times 1 plus r raised to the t, and y equals a 
1 minus r raised to the t, where this one was growth and this one's decay. Right? Those were the two equations we were basically using. You good with that so far? All right, so we will focus on those. So problem number one says, a, someone deposited $40,000 into an account earning 6% each year. How much money will be in the account after 15 years? So 40,000 in an account, seems like a good amount of money. Problem number one, somebody puts 40,000 into a bank account and they're saving it there because they wanna make interest on it. It tells us that this particular account earns 6% every year. And we want to know how much is in this account after 15 years. Okay? So, using our equation, and we're using plus R because we're increasing what we, we have. We're not losing value. We're increasing it. All right? So, this is my A value. This is my R value, but we actually have to make it 0.06 because 6% and 0.06 are the same thing. And then this is my T value. And let's plug it in. So I get Y equals 40,000, 1 plus 0.06 raised to the 15th power. Okay? And this is one where you'll want to have a little bit more oomph of a calculator. So let me pull mine up. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 40,000 and then 1 plus 0.06, and then we did it to 15 years. So it's going to be more. Everyone agree it's going to be more? How much more? Do you think it's 60,000? Is it 50,000? Is it like just 1,000? Is it less than 1,000? I don't know. Let's hit enter and figure it out. Holy cow. So you put $40,000 in this particular bank account, earning 6% after 15 years, your $40,000 is now worth $95,862.33 to the nearest penny. I don't know how many of you have an extra $40,000 laying around, but if you did, would that be kind of cool if you're like, hey, I don't really need that money right now, but in five years I need it? Is it more than double? I got it. 1.899024604. E to the 17th. Oh, let's see. Did you go 40,000? Which calculator are you using? That one? Did you do open parentheses 1 plus 0.06? Oh, it's 0.06. Because you, you put 6% in? Yeah, I put 6. So then, it, yeah. So you need to make your rate a true decimal. So 6% uh, is 0.06. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. If, if you got that, that's a, that's a wicked money. Yeah. So do you want us to just write that number down? Yeah. Absolutely fine. And you know that dollars, if you were to talk about money, it's two decimal places, right? 33 cents. Yeah. It's like, how do you have 772 or 100 thousandths of a penny? You don't. Okay. Um, let's go back to this board. Number two. Number two says, hey, you have a diamond ring that's worth 8000 bucks. It's expected to appreciate, so it's in, going up in value, 7% per year. How much is this thing worth? And uh, so you have this $8,000 diamond ring. That's, that's a pretty good diamond. 7% in 20 years. So change 7% to 0 0.07, and that's your rate. That's going to be your A value. That's going to be your time. So I get uh, y equals a one, and it's plus because it's increasing in value, 0.07 raised to the 20. And so I need to plug the 8,000 in for a. So is it going to be worth uh, more? You think? So 8,000. So your eight thousand dollar diamond. How much? What was the percent? Point, uh, 
How much? 07. It was a rate of 7%. 7%. Cool. Raise to the 20 years? 20? Woo, your $8,000 diamonds now worth just under $31,000. $30,957.48 if you round it. Huh. How does that work? How does rounding work? No. How does it go to. Oh, never mind. I thought it went lower. Oh, it's definitely more. Huh. All right. Let's see. Um, number three. Number three says a computer server and network system is estimated at $58,000. So this isn't just your average computer. You bought a whole system, huh? Uh, and it loses, it depreciates 9% per year. So it's going to be worth less each year. And then find the value in five years. Okay, so I'm going to make that 0 0.09, which is that's my rate. That's my A value. And that's my T value. And notice how this equation changes a smidge. Um, one minus the rate. So there's a minus sign there because we're losing value. Okay, so this is means it's worth 91% of what it had been the year before, and each year it compounds like that. So I'm going to go one, oh, and I forgot my A value, sorry about that. So 58,000, uh, one minus 0.09, and that's raised to the fifth. So it's definitely going to be worth less than $58,000, okay? So I'm going to go 58000 one minus, how much is it losing percentage-wise? 0 0.09. 0.09, 9% a year, oh boy. So it's losing. See how these were both plus, and now there's a minus there? And then we want to know how much it's worth in how many years? Five years. Okay. Here, so your $58,000 system that you bought? is now only worth $36,193.86. How does that work? Well, let me ask you this. You all have cell phones. Most of you do, I imagine. Does your cell phone lose value? Yeah. Like, let's say you pay 500 for I'm just putting a value out there. I don't know how much you pay for it. But like, let's say you want to go to trade it in. Do they give you a certain amount maybe? I guess. I don't know. You know, every, every place has some sort of deal. But what it comes down to is, is that company in business to make money? Yeah, if you're gonna come, if you you go to create a company that's designed not to make money, you're gonna be broke. It's not gonna be good. Cool. We all right so far? Is this all making okay sense? Yeah. All right. Number four. Oops. Number four says uh, a concrete mixing truck has a current value of three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars. It depreciates at 6.5% per year. Find out how much it'll be worth in eight years. Wow, $333,000 for a cement truck. Ooh, okay. You got a rate of 7%, or wait, rate of 6.5%. And we wanna know how much it is worth in eight years. Okay. So I need it, this is already a decimal, but I need to make it a true decimal, meaning I don't want a percent sign. So I need to make this 0.065. Is that okay? I'm gonna get y equals a one minus, and it's a minus sign because it's losing value, uh, raised to the t. All right, so let's plug our $333,000 vehicle in there. One minus 0.065. 6.5 raised to the 8. Mm. Okay. <coughs> raised 8 years? Yeah. Yay. Okay. Wow. That'd be a lot of money spending on a cement truck. So your cement truck is worth $194,507.84 if you sold it eight years after you bought it. What you would hope, though, 
is this cement truck. So I got a good friend of mine. He's works in, he married a family owned a construction company out in California. And he had bought all these different heavy pieces of machinery. He bought like two water trucks and two or three blades, which are the six wheel and has a blade on the bottom and it makes dirt flat, makes roads and stuff. And they're worth ridiculous amounts of money where you pay for it. But the company, if you were to use that vehicle, pays a certain amount per hour and then you have to pay a person to drive it. And I remember one time he told me that his blade, one of his blades made $160 an hour. So that's how much the company paid for that blade to be done. And then he paid somebody like 30 bucks an hour to drive it. So they're making 130 bucks an hour. Now that part of 130 bucks is the fuel and any upkeep that needs to take place on it. But you think it probably profits. Um, I know he's done quite well with money. Well, he, I think he spends everything he has. So, you know, he has a lot of materialistic items. I hope when he turns 65, he actually put a little money away. And then, ooh, number five, you are excited to buy your new bright red Ford Mustang. So $31,500 car, I don't know if that's the actual price, we're just putting a value there. And they, it'll lose value at 7% per year. When you finally pay off your car loan in four years, how much is your Mustang worth? So if you buy a car, you have to pay whatever that price was. So you're paying the $31,500 plus you have interest on it unless you have a 0% financing. So let's see, we could probably do this pretty quickly just on the calculator. So it's a $31,500 car, 31, oops, 500, 31,5, and it's one, and it's minus because it's depreciating, and it's losing 7%, so it's losing 0.07, and we're gonna say that we, in four years. So you paid $31,500 for this car, but your car is actually only worth after you get done paying it off $23,563.64. But be, you, being you purchased it for a certain level, you can't go back to your the car dealership saying, hey, it's only worth this, so I, that's what I should pay now. No, you, you purchased it here, you have to pay for the price here, even though it's only worth this now. So I guess a life lesson on that is, though we live in a society that automobiles are a necessity, they probably aren't the best investment. Uh, my dad sold cars for years. And he'd always call me, hey, I got a great got a great, great car for you. I said, ah, no, I'm okay. I said, oh, no, no, I'm okay. Because he always wanted me to spend more money to buy new cars. And I'm like, uh, dad, 185 days a year, my car sits in a high school parking lot. And kids walk by it, and they brush up against it, and they scrape against it. And I just need something to drive me seven miles from home to here. So, oh, yeah, would you get this fancy? Wow. No, you've seen how your friends walk through parking lots with their backpacks on, huh? Yeah. Not you, but your friends or some other people that you've seen. You've probably seen them walk really close to a car accidentally and maybe bump into it, maybe put a little Acc scratch in it. Accidentally. Accidentally. We'll go with quotes on that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh, what happened to that one, Shimon? Maybe, maybe a key is involved. <laughs> Putting racing stripes on it. <laughs> exactly. So, cool. Hey, did you get those done? I hope you did, because we just did it as a class, right? Make sure your name's on that and pass that forward, please. And so, tomorrow, while you're passing it, I'll make sure you're passed up. Thank you, dear.
Nine to twenty. Twelve is one. We shall in the written part of the one of our best ones yet. There you go. Tomorrow has our last quiz. Tomorrow's our last quiz of the school year. So let's think about it. So I'm going to give you something that we're going to work on here. So today we have kind of a uh, review that we're working on, which is actually page 167, 168. 167, 168. The nice thing is there's only stuff on 167. I think it's seven problems. Um, and then Tuesday... We have a quiz, and then Wednesday and Thursday this week, um, anything from that review packet, the yellow packet I gave you, we can go over. Friday, we do the uh, written part of the final exam, and then next week, I don't know what the final schedule is. Anybody know? It's all you got joy. Thank you. Like last time? Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday is graduation. Wednesday is graduation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's just pull it up here. Uh, Cherry Creek Schools. Um... Our schools, Sierra High School, Cherry Creek, and, 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 some says announcements. Um, any thoughts? The us program services. What do you think? Let's look at this full calendar. I don't know if that might be the right spot or not. I don't know. Ours is um, May 21st. The fifth period. Fifth period is May 21st? Where did you find that? I have it on my phone. Oh, awesome. So, fifth, when, do, how many finals do we have that day? Um, we have second period and then sixth period, and then fifth period is our last. Second, six, five. So, and that's Tuesday? I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, so Tuesday, we have periods two, six, and five, like that? Yeah. Okay, which is us. So that's Tuesday next week, a week from tomorrow. Holy cow. And let's see, the written part of the final is just that, your pencil and paper. Uh, the one that's next week, we do on Schoology. And I wrote it, so it's really bad. <laughs> That's what we got. How will we do the how will we do the final exam? Well, the one thing you have to realize is your final exam is worth 15% in this class. It's worth 15% of your overall grade. If you take other math classes, it's worth up to 20. Um, so what we'll do is you take it and everything you've done so far, try and get 15% on. Cool? Good? All right, I want to give you guys and girls the rest of the period of work on page 167. You are welcome to come talk to me if you have a question or a problem. Just bring up a pencil if you would, or a pen. Cool? Good? Happy? Mm -hmm.